All right, guys, so let's solve some problems from chapter seven. And we're not going to be doing a lot of problems from this chapter because well, the, the framework is important from chapter seven because we'll be using it later on in, in the upcoming chapters. Uh, so this is just a starting point. So there isn't really that many problems to solve from this chapter particularly. So for the assignment, I'll just write this down here. The assignment problems are going to be number one, two, four, and seven. And we are going to be solving right now number three. Let's read the question, it's right here. So what we have is this equation of wage, nominal wage, equals to price, one minus two M plus Z. And what's given to us is that uh, M is the unemployment rate and Z is the is it given markup? The markup that we have. So before we start working, let's take a look at this equation. Uh, remember the equation we have seen, the price setting equation. It was, I think, I was wage equals to expected price times the function of unemployment and all other factors. So that is exactly what we have here. The uh, only difference, remember we've talked about this before, is that for the time being, we will ignore expectation and just take price as it is. And the function, this is one minus two M plus Z. Now we have Z, Z and Z. And M, of course, in this equation, M is unemployment. I don't know why the question is using that notation. I mean, if it's unemployment, we can just call it U, but the book is saying M is unemployment. So let's just stick to it. But effectively, this equation is exactly the same as this equation, which we have already seen. So I'll just bring this out again, W equals to P. 1 minus 2m plus z. Okay, let's also look at whether this makes sense or not. Okay, so we have minus in front of m, which is unemployment. So that makes sense. When unemployment goes up, when m goes up, w goes down. And that is the relationship we would expect to see. Uh, what else? z is, remember from our theory, it's all other factors. Apart from unemployment, all other factors that affect wage. Over here, we have Z is equal to markup. And what actually the question says Z is two things. It's markup, it's also the unemployment benefit. Okay, so let's just write that down as well. Markup, it's also the unemployment benefit. And it can be 20 different things. Z is a composite of every other factor that affects uh, wage rate. So in, in this equation, there is a plus, a positive sign in front of Z. What does that mean? Uh, Z is a composite of two factors in this question, markup and unemployment benefits. What happens when markups go up? Farms are making more money. When they're making more money, they can afford to pay their workers more. So uh, wage go up, that makes sense. Uh, this is also unemployment benefit. What happens when unemployment benefits go up? Uh, the desire for workers to work goes down because even if you don't work, the amount of money that you earn, your unemployment benefit is going up. So when the economy or when the government is offering high unemployment benefits, when Z is high, wedge will also have to be high to be 
to to incentivize the workers to come and work. So the equation makes sense with the fact that there is a negative sign in front of M and a positive sign in front of Z. Okay. So now let's try and solve the problems in part A. Uh, what is the real wage? Real wage, remember, is uh, wage, W, which is nominal wage, divided by P. What is the real wage as determined by the price setting equation? So the price setting equation was P equals to the wage uh, that is paid plus a certain markup. Well, in this equation uh, problem, of course, M isn't a markup, it's Z. It's just a matter of notation, what we call what? wage plus, plus, plus the, the markup. And we have to calculate the real wage. So the real wage is W divided by P, which means over here we get 1 divided by 1 plus Z. But the question also tells us, uh, right here, the question tells us that Z is 10%, or let's say 0 0.1. So we can write this as 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1, or basically real wage is equal to 1 divided by 1.1. Let's leave it like this for now and move on to the next part. And I think we'll have to use that later on. Part B says solve for the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, so once again, theoretically, what's the natural rate of unemployment? We start off with the wage setting equation, which gives us W by P is equal to function of unemployment and all other factors. Uh, we start off with uh, the wage, the price setting equation, which gives us one divided by one plus M. Of course, in this question, remember Z and M are different things. And then what we do is we put them together and we find function of the natural rate of unemployment, Z is equal to one, one plus M. So this is what we usually do. So if we do that in the context of this question, the so function of unemployment and all other factors, uh, we already have this. So what we have is W by P is equal to one minus two M plus Z. This is from the question directly. And what we have already calculated uh, from the, the price setting equation is that W by P is equal to one divided by 1.1. If we put this together, what we are going to get is 1 minus 2m plus z is equal to 1 divided by 1.1. And so let's just continue to simplify. So we have 1.1 minus 2.2m plus 1.1z is equal to 1. Uh, notice from the question that we're trying to solve for the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, so unemployment in this question is M, so we're trying to solve for M. We're trying to find the value for M. So that has 2.2 M is equal to 0 0.1 plus 1.1 Z. So M, the natural rate of unemployment, is equal to 0 0.1 plus 1.1 Z divided by 2.2. Or if we simplify this a little bit, you guys can keep it as it is, that's perfectly fine. But if we simplify this, what we get is one divided by 22 plus Z divided by 2.2. I think if my calculation is, oh, sorry, actually not 2.2, just Z divided by two. This is the natural rate of unemployment. So as far as calculating uh, part B is concerned, this is done, this is our answer. Uh, let's try and interpret what this means, okay? 
So remember that M is unemployment and Z is basically a composite of factors that affect unemployment. Okay. So what do we have here? Suppose Z is zero. Okay, for let's assume we do not have any Z. In that case, M is equal to one by 22. Uh, one by 22 is around 0 0.04, I think. Uh, 0 0.04, yeah, I think that's accurate. So if we have M equal to one by 22, which is 0 0.045 something, what that means is that unemployment rate is 4.5% in the economy. If we do not have Z, which is factors that increase unemployment, which is high uh, benefits for workers and uh, markup and all that other factors. If we have none of that, the unemployment rate in the economy is 4.5%. But then we introduce Z and gradually the unemployment begins to rise. So for example, actually not an example, in question three, it's given that Z is 0 0.1. So let's plug that in and let's see what happens. So M is equal to this we know plus Z is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 divided by two. Uh, and then what do we get? We get 0 0.055, whatever. So you see that because we have introduced a 10%, uh, what do you call it? Unemployment benefit or minimum wage, uh, unemployment in the economy has gone up. And as this continues to increase, unemployment rate, as Z continues to increase, unemployment will continue to increase in the economy. And if Z falls, unemployment in the economy will fall. So I think that that is actually part C, which says that what happens to the natural rate of unemployment if Z falls from 10% to 5%. Okay, so let's just write down the function that we have, which is basically the autonomous part of unemployment plus the part that depends on Z. If Z is 10%, unemployment is 4.5%. My calculation may be wrong. I do not have a calculator. But I think I'm close enough. And if Z is equal to 5%, uh, in that case, unemployment will be equal to this is a bit more. I think I'll have to go get a calculator. Right, yeah, so I had made a mistake. So this is actually 9.5%. And if Z is equal to 5%, this is about 7%. Okay. So basically what we had already expected to see. All right. So this is actually wrong as well. Uh, okay, but let's just focus on this right here. So as we had expected, as Z falls, uh, the incentives for workers to stay out of the job, the job, the, basically the labor market is going down as a result they're more uh, desperate to find a job and so they're willing to accept a lower wage as a result uh, M is falling if we see that Z is increasing so the benefits to workers is increasing to unemployed workers is increasing uh, they're 
the worker's incentive to work to find gainful employment is lower. As a result, what we see is that unemployment goes up. We have already discussed this. So that is it for number three. And that is all we are going to do from the book. So let's go to the questions. So part one, you guys know what question one is like. It's just true or false. You guys can do that. Question two is a bit more detailed than number one. But it still gives you five different statements. Uh, so 2A to 2E. And all you guys have to do is sort of discuss them. Do you agree with them? How do they work out? Small discussions on that. So you guys can do that as well. We've done number three. In number four, there is an interesting case study. So a situation is presented to you. And based on that situation, there are five brief questions. What this is going to do is help you uh, understand the concepts better. So do go through that. Uh, number five and six are very similar. So here's the thing for number five and six, these are not part of the assignment, but if you want to have proper understanding of the chapter, it is actually quite important that you go through five and six. Do it at your own time. And then of course, if you have problems, you can come to me during the live sessions. It's important that you go through five and six, but not part of the, uh, the, the assignment. Number seven is also interesting. You guys have uh, a case study. And then based on that, there are some short questions. So you guys can go through that as well. And you guys have to go to some websites and find out some values and definitions. It's quite interesting. And then after that, eight, uh, you don't really have to go through eight. That's fine. Uh, number nine also, if you want to go through, you can, obviously. But it's not absolutely necessary. So that's the end of chapter seven which was the uh, first chapter of our medium run analysis. And we are just getting into it. In the next couple of chapters, we're going to be developing this framework a lot more. We'll be introducing inflation and whatnot. And then we'll see that things become a lot more interesting.